2017. Hello everyone. So we'll be brief. I will be. I will try to to talk longer than uh, 30 minutes. So uh, who am I? I'm Guillaume Orgodou. I'm French. I'm sure you can tell that from my voice. Uh, I don't do reverse for a living, but uh, network security, and uh, maybe you know a tool I maintain. It's called um, it's called Scapy uh, or Scapy in French. It's a tool used to um, play with network packets, send them, receive them, and also express them uh, in a really easy way. Uh, as a disclaimer, I have to say also that uh, I'm not, not a, a radar uh, or um, my SM power user, so today I might say incomplete stuff, so please accept my apologies in advance. So this talk will be about um, R2M2, which is a plugin for uh, radar. Uh, if you don't know radar, that's an open source uh, reverse engineering tool with a nice uh, command line interface. And MySM, that's a Python framework. I will give you a later on example about uh, MySM. So the goal of R2M2 is to ease uh, reversing a new architecture um, by uh, using MySM as an assembly or disassembly engine, and uh, also using uh, the symbolic exec execution feature of uh, MySM. And this, the goal of this tool is also to bring uh, R2 features to MySM, for example, the graphical interface, shortcuts, and tools, and so on. And because I'm not, um, let's say, um, a reverse engineer, I want to keep all of the smart parts, uh, the uh, assembly, the assembly logic, into uh, uh, my SM. So for me, for my project, uh, R2M2 has uh, at least uh, three benefits. The first one is that it helped me to implement a new CPU architecture faster by relying on my SM because it's highly expressive. It's kind of really convenient to express a new architecture. And also, because my SM is written in Python, I was able to modify the implementation of the fly while reading the CPU architecture uh, datasheet. Also, it gave, you, uh, or gave me, at least, uh, flexibility uh, because I was not stuck with a single usage. So at the beginning, I chose to use my SM for this, uh, let's say, weird CPU architecture. So it gave me assembly, disassembly, and uh, emulation. And uh, R2M2 is giving me uh, uh, the graphical interface of R2. So I'm not stuck with like, only one tool. I can use both. And finally, R2M2 is uh, translating the internal MySM expressions into radar ether, which is a, a R2 internal expression. And here, the main benefit of R2M2 is to use uh, dynamic analysis features to enhance static analysis. For example, to find out the address of a string, which is accessed for, um, by, a, let's say, a move. Okay, so um, R2M2 is uh, available on GitHub. Sorry, yeah, I'm not drinking alcohol, I just uh, water. So R2M2, you can get it on GitHub. It works on Linux and OS X. Uh, it also works on Docker. You can pull an image on Docker Hub. I will uh, recommend that you use and choose a Docker image because some dependencies are kind of difficult to um, uh, to install. So please go for, uh, for Docker. You can check it on my GitHub page. So um, why did I, at some point in my life, needed to um, call uh, Python from C? Because indeed, that's kind of weird. So um, in, let's say, one year ago, I discovered a new, or let's, let's say, exotic CPU architecture, which was not implemented in any, any um, other tool. Excuse me. Uh, it's really warm here. Um, so I started to play with the um, uh, firmware update, so update binary, and I played with bin wall strings and these tools, and none of them managed to find the architecture. So a friend of mine helped me to uh, desolder the SPI flash uh, and dump it, so at the end we got a, bi a bigger binary. So we tried again bin wall and strings and other tools, and we didn't find anything. And one morning, Another friend came, came out with the following format string. Uh, if you have a close look, it could be something you, you will use in your software in order to dump uh, registers values. So of course, what we did next, uh, we asked Google, and Google told us that it was a Toshiba MEP. So what I decided to do next was to implement this architecture, uh, Toshiba MEP, into uh, my ISM. Um, sorry, no. Here's something uh, before. Um, like back then in 2015, sorry, um, this architecture was only implemented in binutils. So for example, that's an output of obj dump, uh, where we can see here that uh, there is some 
uh, vector table with jumps, and for example, here we have another function, like further away in the binary, playing with a stack pointer. And then I decided to implement it in my SM, uh, because it was not really useful to uh, actually uh, reverse the binary. So let's try the first demo. I hope it won't fail. So it's too small, I guess. Oops. Is it big enough? Yeah? OK. So if you want to use R2M2, the first thing you need to define is a variable in order to tell him which architecture you want to, to use in a R2. So it's R2M2 Arch. In this case, that's MEP, MEP in a Little Indian. Then you need to launch R2, and you specify the architecture. So usually, the architecture in R2, you specify uh, x86, ARM, or MIPS. In this case, that's the name of the plugin. And then, that's usual uh, um, R2 stuff. You specify the binary. Then I can try to disassemble 10 instructions. That's, again, regular um, R2 commands. Um, the only magical trick here is that uh, um, behind, R2M2 is calling Python code, is calling uh, uh, MyASM in order to uh, disassemble the, the architecture. And we can, have, we can see that we have the same output as in uh, jump with the jumps, and then uh, move zero, R0, which are uh, knobs in uh, MEP. I said before, uh, R2M2 is able to translate between uh, expression in MyASM into uh, uh, R2 uh, ASL expression, so we can check that. We can uh, specify a variable with, uh, for R2. This one will enable a new display. So we can disassemble 10 instructions. And here we can see that MySM was able to provide the semantic of the instruction uh, to R2. So we know that if we execute this instruction, this jump will jump to address uh, 100. Something we can do also is uh, uh, type AA. It means analyze in R2, and then display the call graph. Uh, that's not nice, so screen color zero should be black and white. So what you have here, that's a call graph, that's exactly the same uh, code as the one I showed in uh, Objdump, except that it's much nicer to use. We can like uh, go everywhere we need and see the, the blocks. Okay, so if we go back to the, uh, the first, uh, the previous display, um, I said before my SM is able to translate expressions so we can also emulate in uh, R2. So if I tap AEIPC, um, R2 will uh, initialize its uh, virtual machine, initialize the uh, internal PC, and we can try to step one instruction. So obviously, I will, hopefully uh, R2 will jump to uh, address 100. That's what it did. We can disassemble five, five instructions. See, OK, sorry, color, uh, oops. Uh, typo, I won't drink. Okay, so PD5. So PC is here at the correct address. And what I want to do next is uh, do two more steps in order to have 40 or 0x28 into a register R9. So right now, R9 is equal to 0. Oops. Okay, two more steps. R9 is equal to 28, and we can check that PC move to uh, uh, this instruction. So that's, for, that's it for the, this first demo. Uh, we need to remember that everything is done dynamically by calling Python and converting uh, internal MySM expression into R2. So for me, that was a nice way of improving what I had with uh, Objdump and start reversing the binary. So what I want to do in the next part of the talk, oops, I want to, okay. Full screen, sorry. Okay. Well, in the next part of the talk, I will uh, I want to introduce uh, my SM and my SM features by uh, giving you examples. I will also show you how you can implement your own R2 plugins. And finally, I will conclude with uh, R2M2 uh, designs. If you want, you can go to this website. Uh, also, just send a tweet, and you can uh, get the links from the tweet. On this website, you will find the slides uh, in, in HTML and PDF and also a file in text file where you can just copy and paste all of the examples. And they all work in a, in a Docker image of R2M2. So my SM is a quick uh, tutorial. That's a Python-based reverse engineering framework with really um, a lot of uh, cool features. 
You can assemble the assemble, of course. Uh, you can express uh, ex instruction semantics in order to emulate. Um, and also, and for me that's the most interesting feature, you can really implement a new architecture. On their website, on the blog, and on the GitHub account of MySM, you can find, like, uh, let's say, more complete example, because today will be a, a short introduction with uh, silly um, binaries, just, just to give you an idea of what you can do with MySM. So please check the blog, they have really cool stuff there. Um, so first, is that big enough? Yeah? Okay. So first, what you can do with MySM is assemble. In order to do that, you need to create a machine, MySM machine. Then you need to get the mnemonic object. So MN object is used to assemble and disassemble. So here you create it. And then you can call the from string uh, function in order to get from this uh, movex one string into the internal uh, MySM instruction. And then you can call ASM in order to uh, get the binary representation of this uh, instruction. In this case, movex one we have in x uh, 36 32 uh, bits four different binary expression. So I didn't know that before doing this example. Assembling, that's the other way around. So that's a bit Pythonic, sorry if you don't read Python. So here we iterate over all of the four uh, uh, possibilities and just call this in order to assemble uh, these, these instructions. So I'm, I got lucky again. We have the same results uh, when we assemble of this, uh, all of these four instructions. Move x1 like four times. Next thing we can do, we can play with the intermediate language. So again, here I will start uh, my SM machine. It will be ARM, and I will disassemble one instruction. And I don't know what is the meaning of this instruction, so what I can do next is like get his name with dot name, it's add, and get this, uh, its arguments. In this case, we have three arguments. The, um, their type is uh, expression IDs. Uh, it's uh, my SM uh, internal expression for registers, so it's R2, R8, and R0. Then we can get another object. It's called Intermediate Representation Architecture. That's a big name, big, uh, big name and long name just to say that we'll be able to get the internal representation and uh, later on emulate. So then I can use the get IR function in order to get this kind of long representation of the instruction semantic. Again, it's using internal MySM expression. So what is this ad is doing is uh, adding R8, R8, sorry, R0 and returning the value, storing the value in R2. Okay, that's uh, one more step towards emulation. So what we can do next is a um, symbolic execution. So first, we take this instruction, add it to a block with a add instruction uh, function, and then we can display the current block by uh, iterating over all of the elements. So that's uh, one block. Um, the block starts at address zero, it only has one instruction, and this weird stuff, IR, de uh, IR destination, that's the internal MySM PC. So we don't really care about that. And here, that's much nicer than the previous uh, representation. R2 is just equal to R8 plus, plus R0. Next step, we can try to uh, emulate that. So first, we get the symbolic execution object. We uh, initiate it, and then we emulate one block with a emul IR block. And we can use, for example, dump ID in order to get the modified registers. You can also use dump mem in order to get the list of the memory addresses that were modified. So in this example, um, this add instruction, uh, at the end, the R2 um, register will be equal, equal to the initial value of R0 plus the initial value of uh, uh, R8. We can do one more step. Here we can specify a value for R0. Here it will be zero. Emulate again, display as our registers, and R2 will be equal to the initial value of R8. And the last step here, I will assign my birthday, so that's July 28, to R8, emulate, dump the register, and the final value of R0 will be uh, my birthday. Okay. That's nice, but um, that's a lot of work, like remembering uh, machines and calling instructions, adding them to blocks and so on. So MySM is providing sandboxes in order to do a lot of uh, the work for you. So here I will build a simple and silly example in order to have a binary to emulate. And this uh, silly uh, example will just create an add function that takes two integers and return uh, uh, the results. So here I can... Uh, compile and try it so it will display three. That's again, that's silly. On the MySM side, what we can do, 
we can build uh, this uh, sandbox uh, recon.py uh, script. Uh, we can start um, creating a sandbox object. So first, that's mainly boilerplate. When we'll ask MySM to parse arguments, and finally, we'll create a sandbox object. Um, MySM is able to uh, parse ELF and PE files. So I'm using this, this feature here in order to get the address of add using this line by uh, uh, accessing uh, ELF, um, uh, ELF headers. Then, because it's um, x86 in uh, 32 bits, I will push arguments on the stacks, on the stack, sorry. So it will add um, these two integers. And this stuff is a bit weird. That's uh, really uh, specific to my ISM. I will push the implicit breakpoints, which is the return address of the function. And finally, I will emulate uh, the binary by a calling run, and then display the final value. So if I'm doing that, so I'm calling here the Python on the script, and I will specify the, um, the binary. Uh, my ISM will display all of these instructions. So it means that he managed to emulate all of them. And again, we'll display my birthday. So it's a silly example just to show you that if you have a function in a binary, you can emulate it really easily with uh, my SM. OK. There is many more things you can do. Again, you can check their blog. You can attach a, GD, uh, you can attach a GDB to a, to a sandbox. Uh, what you can do also, cool feature, you can solve constraints uh, using uh, these three. So you can get the semantics of uh, my SM instructions and then uh, solve constraints. So on this slide, you have like complete examples, again, silly and simple ones, but um, uh, you can play with them later on. Okay. Um, then I want to show you how you can implement a new architecture to MySM. So what's, that's exactly what I did for uh, MEP. Um, and to do so, you need to take uh, three different steps, uh, and they are not that complicated. Sorry. So first thing you need to do, you need to specify or let's say implement registers in the rex.py file. Indeed, I won't describe that today because it's mainly strings in a file, so it's not really inter interesting. Then you need to define opcodes in the arch.py file, and finally the semantics in sem.py. So arch. Um, in this example, I would want to add uh, an instruction to my SM. It's add add immediate in MIPS. So what we can start to do is check the specification of this instruction. And the specification says that uh, first we have six bits, 001, 001. Then five bits that encode the source register. Five more bits that encode the target re registers. And finally, the immediate uh, encoded on 16 bits. And in my SM, all you need to do is call the adopt function, give the name of the instruction, and then define something called a bit string. It's indeed um, a list of Python objects. So the first bit, bit string will be 001001. Then we'll give him a variable called rs, another one rt, and finally the immediate. And I will define that in the next slide. And because for this specific instruction, the way it is encoded is not the way uh, it is displayed, we can play with the last list in order to invert rt and rs. OK. Um, you need to define the arguments of this instruction. Uh, again, there will be bit strings, so RS, the source register, will be a bit string of length 5. And here we are telling MySM that it must be decoded with the M uh, MIPS32 uh, GPREG uh, object. And we do the same stuff for the target regi register and the same stuff for the immediate. And all of these uh, MIPS32 objects, or whatever, let's say a MAP object, they need to implement encode and decode in order to uh, return my, uh, my SM expressions. And my SM will take care of everything, like getting some bits from the binary and calling the, um, this, uh, this method. So that's why I'm saying it's really expressive and it's really easy to add a new, uh, new architecture. So here's a simplified example of the um, immediate. Uh, it's almost what you will find in the my SM uh, source code. So this uh, object, it has a decode function, and the decode function will take a value uh, from the binary and return a uh, MySM expression. In this case, that's uh, an integer. Encode, that is the other way around. It's taking the internal MySM expression and returning here uh, the value that will be uh, encoded in the binary, uh, in the binary expression. Okay. 
Then you can add a new opcode in same.py. So the idea is to implement the logic. So what you can do, uh, the first solution is to go, let's say, the hard way, and you will write a full and complete uh, my SM expression. So here it's uh, X E A F to affect up to uh, specify add, and so on. It's a bit long, and obviously in order to implement add, that's too much. So what you can do instead is uh, be, la be lazy like me and implement uh, the semantic using something they call uh, the same builder. And at the end, what you need to do, and the only things you need to do in order to uh, implement this add instruction is uh, defining a Python function, add, specifying um, its arguments, and are indeed the instruction parameters, and just write destination equals source plus immediate. So it's really, uh, really, uh, really cool and simple. And finally, if you go back to the uh, uh, previous slide, if you remember, we used the get IR fun uh, function in order to get the uh, internal MySM uh, expression. Um, we can do the same. And here, we can see that if um, the encoded um, instruction was add A0, A1, 2, we'll have the following um, MySM uh, expressions. That's really nice. And then my SM is taking care again of everything with, by using the same boxes and so on. So demo two, this one, uh, I need to apologize, is less graphical. So what I want to do in this example, I want to execute um, a Python sandbox on the MEP target. It's a bit small. OK. I want to emulate a function um, that is playing with a network. It's called send login message. And that is a function that will send you back the banner, the telnet banner, when you connect to the, um, this specific device I'm trying to reverse. So the goal of this uh, script is to launch the full binary. So it should be uh, 16 megabytes. And go to a specific address, the address of the send login message function, and emulate the function. And this send login message function is doing more calls, for example, to malloc, strlen, uh, printf, and obviously send. And what I did in this uh, Python script, I asked my SM to put breakpoints on uh, these functions uh, in order to emulate them in a different way. So for example, for strlen, I asked uh, my SM to put a breakpoint on strlen. So my SM will stop the sandbox and call a specific callback in Python. The callback in Python will access registers values from Python. For example, in MEP, it will use R1 in order to get the address of the, the string. Do the length computation with, uh, with Python, and then set the value of the register with um, uh, Python again. So what we'll have on the screen, when I will pre press enter, we'll have all of the, all of the uh, instructions sorry, that are emulated by uh, MySM. In red, you will get all of the functions that are indeed executed in Python. And in green, you will have the final string that is usually sent over the network, but today it's uh, displayed on the, on the screen. OK, good, it worked. So here on top, OK. OK, so here on top, at the start of the function, there is like some instruction playing with SPE. Um, then here on strlen, we'll see that there is a value that's a string, and a string address, which is uh, set into R R1. And then uh, my SM will break on uh, strlen, emulate it, compute the string length, store it in R0, and uh, follow the execution. So he's doing that for strlen several times. Calling malloc, again, that's a weird trick to emulate malloc in Python. Call sprint sprintf in order to build the final string. And fin finally, here, instead of sending to the network, we will just display the, the banner. OK, so it's a really silly example, but as I said before, my main, um, my main job is to do network. So from time to time, I'm uh, uh, reversing sorry, network protocols. So here the use case could be, uh, let's say you have a weird network protocol. You reverse it, and you implement it in Scapy, of course, and then you want to play with it. So what you can do, you can emulate the banner in MySM, check that your implementation is complete. And once it's complete, you can like, uh, send the packet to, to a real target. So I think this uh, demo is short and not visual, but can give you like, some idea of what you can do with MySM. OK, next thing. So uh, it took me, let's say, six months to implement the architecture in, uh, in, uh, in MySM, not because it was difficult, be because I had no time to do it. 
And at the end, I could only emulate the binary, assemble the assembler, so it was not better than objdump. So I played with uh, internal MySM tools, for example, the full.py scripts. Full.py, uh, you give him a, a binary, he will disassemble it and give you a dot file. So it's a, exactly the same graph format as the one that, that was discussed during the first talk. And at the end, you can get something like that, which is a call graph. So it's um, the same output as the one I showed you in R2 during the first demo. So it's a first jump from address 0 to address 100. So it's nice. You have a call graph comparing to uh, Objdum, it's better, but still it's too difficult to do some real uh, job done. So what I did next, I decided to have a look at uh, R2 plugins and mainly R2 plugins in Python. So the goal here again is to call Python from C. First thing you can do, and that's really simple, uh, you can use R2PM. R2PM, that's a R2 package manager, and you can use the lang Python um, binding. And that's it, if you want to, uh, to write a, a plugin. You have on the R2M2 source code, you have this example. So if you want to write a first um, uh, radar plugin, you need to implement uh, assembly function. The assembly function will take a string, movx1. In this case, you will use a uh, MySM machine and return the bytes um, of this instruction. You can also define a disassemble function. Disassemble function will take a buffer will uh, again use a MySM machine, disassemble one instruction, return it, its length, and uh, its uh, string, like jump, uh, address something. Then what you need to do, uh, you need to define a specific Python dictionary with uh, such thing as name, arc, bits, and so on, license. And indeed, that's the exact same names as the C elements of the structure used by R2. And that's it. And then you need to initialize your plugin. Finally, if you go to uh, a shell, you can tap R2 minus I, the name of your uh, Python uh, script, which is now an um, uh, R2 plugin. You can initialize the architecture. You can give him a binary, in this example, at ls, and disassemble five instructions. That's nice. And you can also use PA to assemble a knob. So it works. However, there is an issue because today there is only assembly and disassembly plugins that can be implemented. Uh, so it means that at the end you only get something just a little bit nicer than Objdump. There is no way you can get the call graphs. There is no way you can get the uh, instruction semantics by implementing uh, this, uh, this uh, assembly and disassembly plugin. So in order to do, uh, to implement the other plugins called AE for analysis and ESL, ESL that the um, R2 um, expression names, I needed to do something else, and I'm not really proud of that, but the idea was to call Python from C. So in order to call Python from C, uh, the best solution is to use the CFFI Python module, because at the end, it will take your Python script, put it in a dynamic library, um, along with the Python interpreter. So what I want to show you next is how you can do that. So again, silly example, what I want to do is to call B64 from Python, so first, you need to define an include file with a base64 function. That function will be exported in the dynamic library and called from C. And finally, we need, a, a, again, silly example, that will call the base64 function. So in C, that's nice, and C doesn't know that, indeed, uh, the base64 function will start a Python interpreter and call um, uh, a Python function. In Python, you need to define a new, uh, your specific Python script, so that's what I'm doing for uh, R2M2. First, you need to start the object and then tell uh, the CFFI uh, Python library uh, which function will be exported. So here, that's simple. I'm just opening the include file and uh, giving um, the embedding API function the content of the include file. And then you need to define uh, what to do. So here again, that's simple. I will create a base64 function in Python. First, I will convert a C string into a Python one. Then I will print the value and finally use encode base64 in Python in order to retrieve the base64 value and return a C object or a C value. Okay, so next you can compile. Um, so first you call Python in order, get, in order to get the dynamic library and you can compile the binary. Then you can enjoy and test it. So here, 
we have a, a string and the base64 uh, corresponding value that was computed during the, using uh, Python. That's a bit silly, but that's one more step towards uh, calling my SM from, uh, from C and calling my SM from R2. Next thing I did was to try to access uh, R2 structs from Python. Uh, indeed, it turned out it was not the best, best choice because there is many limitations. The first one being that the, C, um, CFA, uh, sorry, the CFFI C parser does not support all of the C extensions, so from time to time, um, you won't be able to, to parse or include files, and you won't be able to call uh, to get the R2 structures from your uh, software. So at the end, I played with uh, many different possibilities. You can check the links here. They're interesting, but not for this talk. So what I did, I chose to extract R2 plugins myself using a really sim simple Python script in order to um, uh, remove these limitations. Okay. And the third step you need to take, uh, you need to build a R2 plugin in C. Uh, you can check the wiki, R2 wiki, because they have a really nice example on this link. And I won't describe that today because that's, I guess, too much information. And that's exactly the same as we did in Python like five minutes ago, but in C. So you need to define the assemble function, assemble function, and you need to fill a C structure. And that's it. You get a, a R2 plugin in C. Okay. So at last, R2M2. R2M2 uh, uses everything I described so far to bring uh, my SM to uh, R2. Again, uh, it keeps uh, most of the smart bits into my SM. And at the end, it provides two plugins. The first one is called AD for assembly and disassembly. So that's the same stuff we, you can do in pure Python. But the most important part, that's uh, AE, an, uh, AE plugin, analysis and Hazel. If you have R2M2 installed on your laptop, device, computer, you can call RSM-L and check that R2M2 is actually providing ADAE features. Um, now I want to briefly discuss uh, what I did in R2M2. So R2M2 AD is the easy one. It's just basically a, a C, uh, CFFIC wrapper around the MySM machine. You can use it this way, like in the demo. You can export the variable, and you will specify uh, the interface. You can use, for example, RSM2 in order to assemble one instruction and store it in a binary, and then you can disassemble the instruction. Okay. And everything is done with MySM. So again, that's R2 calling Python, calling uh, MySM. Okay. Here, that's the um, output on BinLS. So again, that's nice, but it's not better than objdump. Why? Because here you have jumps here and there, and we don't know where they go, and R2 is not able, for example, to build a call graph. So it's not better than uh, uh, jump. Okay. So the challenging plugin was indeed uh, R2M2 AE, uh, because uh, my SM was, um, I needed my SM to find branches, function calls, blocks, and emulate instructions. Indeed, that's not that difficult. In R2, for all of, this, uh, all of the instructions, like uh, move, uh, jump, call, uh, R2 will, will assign types. For example, if you have a move, it will say, okay, uh, it's, uh, the type is R2 move, uh, same for jumps and so on. So the first type I did in R2M2 was to assign R2 types um, based on uh, some MySM functions. So here, that's um, an example. We have uh, in Python an instruction, MySM instruction. I will call a uh, subcall. So in this case, my SM is telling me that uh, um, this instruction is a call. Then I will check the first uh, argument type. If it's an integer, then I will set the type of the instruction to be a call, and I will try to compute the address. Of course, depending on the architecture, um, this, could, this could be incorrect. On, on the, um, otherwise, if the type is not an integer, I will just say, okay, that's a call, but that's an unknown call because we don't know where it goes. Okay. The most interested, uh, okay, no, let's take the example. So here I will assemble a jump knob, which is a bit silly, but I just want to show you that, uh, comp sorry, compared to what I showed you before, in this case, R2M2 is able to decide and know where the jump is going. We like j just pointing at the knob, but again, that's one of my silly examples. Okay, and the last uh, thing I'm doing with R2M2 is to convert my SM expression on the fly. And the interesting part here is that like, uh, both uh, my SM expression and Hazel, they try to achieve the same thing, which is expressing instruction semantics. 
And indeed, uh, automatic conversion are possible. So on top here, we have a M2 expression, here a R2 expression, and that's what R2M2 is doing, like converting them. And there is one more step R2M2 is doing, is providing the definition of registers on the fly by um, reading the rex.py file and specifying that uh, to R2 using a, a R2 API. Okay, so what we have next, uh, we can use R2 on the same binary, jump knob. We have, again, that here that says that the jump, here, this instruction will go to uh, the knob, and the main difference is here, R2 is aware of the instruction semantics. So after the jump is executed, the PC value will be changed. So that's exactly the same I show you during the first demo. Okay. Third demo, so it's like putting everything together. So I need to go back to R2. Oops. Okay. So first here I will load some function definition of R2. So AFL will list a known function. Send login message that the function I showed you before, uh, the one which was emulated. So I can uh, jump to the address, analyze, oops, and get the call graph. And what I want to show you here, show here for example, for this move, okay, it's, oops, um, for this move, um, R2 is able to know, because of the, of the uh, semantics and uh, expression conversion, is able to know the address of R1, and is able to tell us that at this address we have a string. And also because I told him that uh, this address is the address of strlen, it will like, display this nice stuff. So by using dynamic features of uh, my SM, I was able to enhance, thanks to R2 features, the display I was getting from this uh, map binary. Okay. And I think that's it. So roadmap, um, R2M2 is still under development. It works fine for my usage. Hopefully it will work for you. Um, and something I would like to do, uh, I would like to define a calling convention dynamically. And my main goal here is to enhance again the display I can get in, uh, in, uh, in R2. Um, a month ago I was on my way back from CCC and I couldn't get in the plane. So I went from Hamburg to Paris by train. So I had a lot of like let's say seven hours to spare. So I did a, a POC in order to uh, implement calling conventions. So here on the display, what you can see that this time, STL, uh, for, oops, for STRLN, I hope it's not too small, uh, R2 is able to tell us that uh, the STRLN function will be called on this string. So again, that's something useful in order to help me uh, reversing the binary. Okay. To conclude, uh, first I would like to, say, to thank uh, the MySM and uh, Radar people. So it will be Francois, uh, I would like to, say, to thank Francois, Camille and uh, Fabrice. And also from the Radar community, I would like to say Pancake, that helped me a lot on, uh, on the R2M2 plugin. So they are both powerful tools, and it turned out that combining them was really efficient for my use case. Um, yeah, last thing, like R2M2 is more than a, than a proof of concept that uh, only works on my laptop. You can get it on GitHub, you can run it with a uh, Docker. And one open question, like is it too good to be true? Uh, that's an open question for, from me to you because as I said before, I don't reverse for a living, so maybe my uh, assumptions are like too simple and uh, this R2M2 plugin won't be able to work on a bigger use case. So thanks a lot, thanks for uh, the recon organizer. If you have questions, comments, beers, I will be here until uh, tomorrow, so let me know.